What's up, everybody? It's Make It Make Sense, and we're, we're just going to get right into it. Like the videos, the intro plays, because we got a lot to talk about, a hell of a lot to talk about. So I was listening to Make It Make Sense. Shout out to Make It Make Sense. Make Thank it you. Make Sense to me, intellectual. Make Sense Mims, who a lot of people have been asking to be on the show. So make it yeah. make sense. <laughs> make it make sense, make sense. Make it make sense. You know what was up. Okay, y'all. I know y'all already saw this. I know you guys already saw this. Uh, I couldn't go live earlier because I was with my trainer. Y'all would be surprised. I'm not reveling in this. Um, let's get to the headline and I'll tell you how what I'm actually thinking. Uh, it says Portia Williams reportedly files from divorce from Simon Gobadia after 15 months of marriage. It looks like things may have been going downhill in the Globadia household. According to the documents obtained by People, Portia Williams filed for divorce from Simon on Thursday in Atlanta. The news comes shortly after she confirmed her return to RHOA, as well as headlines about Simon's citizenship. Now, them headlines about that citizenship. That's some hot tea. Um... However, a source reportedly told the outlet that the divorce is unrelated to recent allegations involving Simon's past. They also added that the cause of their breakup is an ongoing matter. Simon and Portia announced their engagement in 2021 and tied the knot in November 22 after pushing Fallon out of the way. <laughs> uh, sorry. Fans then watch the two blend their families. The reason I'm not like, I don't think anybody should really be like reveling in this is because of the blended family. Portia has a young daughter. So she went from being with Portia, Portia and her father to now Portia and Simon. And, you know, blending families is not easy, especially, you know, in Portia's situation. <laughs> Why are y'all like this? Why are y'all like this? God is Noel said Florida Evans voice. Damn, damn, damn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me uh I digress. I digress. Let me take this off the screen. Um, no, but real talk, there is kids involved and the kids have blended and it really does suck when you go through divorce. For me personally, you know, everybody likes who they like. And I feel like we saw Portia really get her happy ending because Portia has always wanted to be, you know, a rich man's wife. Shout out to the real estate insider. I will link his video in the description of this, but they were in a seven million dollar house. $7 million house, uh, Simon, well, I don't know if he bought them or leased them, but more than likely he bought them. He got her a uh, brand new S-Class Mercedes. She has a Rolls Royce that, you know, is the same color as Mims. I think that Portia is always a person who wanted to be married. And Simon was that happy ending. She had the life, the kid, and... I don't know the inner workings of their relationship, but um, I thought they were happy. If you go to Portia's page, let's see. Now look at this picture of Simon. Look at this picture of Simon. He don't look like that no more. And I don't know if it's the fillers or filters, but this was Simon when they moved into the house. Simon with Portia now, completely different man. 
Let's see. Then we got this. Portia Williams coming back to Real Housewives of Atlanta? That's false. But Portia Gravadia is in the building. <laughs> See y'all? Who said? This was one week ago. Um, You know, divorce sucks. Do I think Portia's going to be all right? Yes, because she never got rid of her house. I'm pretty sure they had an ironclad prenup. There is allegations that Simon really did not have the money that he said that he had, which I do think would be a problem for a girl like Portia. Y'all know we read the book. You see the book is prominently displayed. I kind of wanted a happy ending for Portia. Portia was not my favorite cast member on the show, but I really thought, like I really thought maybe they can, you know, they can make it. He gave her everything that we thought that she wanted. Um, You had Simon just the other day. Now, if you guys remember, if you like literally watched the show, you knew that the house that Simon had when Portia stole him from Fallon, that wasn't even their house right before the show started filming. They had just moved there. So everything that Simon did set himself up to be a reality star. And Portia was his golden ticket. And Portia uh, and Simon was Portia's golden ticket to money. It, you know, it sucks, y'all. It sucks. Um, we got a super chat. Let's see. Um, let's see. It said, hey, fine ass memes. <laughs> uh Fallon and I, Fallon, somewhere saying. Am I supposed to feel sorry for this bit? I don't trust. I don't trust it. It's a storyline. Maybe you might be on the horizon. Thanks for the super chat. You might be right. Could this be for a storyline? I don't know that she would need to go this far. People are excited to have her back on the show. They are expecting her to revitalize the show. Somebody said, wow, he does look different. But this does open up Portia's doors. I don't know who Dennis is dating, but I like Dennis for Fallon. I mean, I, not Dennis for Fallon, although Fallon does work for Dennis. Fallon is a brand ambassador for Dennis now. This is a little messy. I could see her getting back with Dennis. I like Dennis for Portia. Dennis has money. Um, he has branded himself kind of like a party guy. So he has a liquor. He has these small little um, hookah, ball, hookah lounges that you can actually, anybody could purchase one from him and put it in your own city. So he's making money left over right. Now we also know that, you know, Portia can be a little ki like kitty clickish. So I was thinking, hmm, she was trying to get with Candy and Todd. She told Candy, you know, I want to, mm -mm, till you come. So, you know, Maybe she's a little more now. She's Portia Williams. She's out there. She's beautiful. She has her own money. So I was thinking, what other are there some power lesbians? And I found Jennifer Pritzker. She's technically, well, she's trans, but she's the only trans uh billionaire. And I don't know, you know, how far Portia's willing to go. But then the next on the list was Ellen. She's worth 370 million. Um, maybe we do know that Portia is not opposed to taking somebody who already has a partner. She's done it before she could do it again. <laughs> no, Dennis. <laughs> Dennis was a cheater. Let me think, because that's been so many years now. She did say Dennis cheated on her. She did say Dennis cheated on her. Um, I don't know. I, you know, I like Portia these days. I'm happy to see her back on RHOA. Um, Goddess Noel said, if he lied about his finances, couldn't she have the marriage annulled based on fraud? We don't technically know. And so I was searching this morning to see if I could pull the court record and I couldn't. I'm going to have to go through um, the PI to probably get the record to see exactly if anything was outlined that says exactly what happened, I couldn't get it on my own. But uh, 
I do. In all all jokes aside, it is a blended family. Um, people felt like it wasn't real, but I really do think that the connection that the kids had for with Portia and Portia's kid had with Simon, I feel like that was real, and it is sad. The scamming stuff, we could have told Portia a mile away. But if you think about it, Portia was with Cordell, and I don't, you know, don't sue me, Cordell, but there was that video circulating with him tooting his booty up, and then Portia alluded to knowing that she was with him basically to be his beard. So Portia's not opposed to, you know, being the front woman for a scam as long as the money's right. Just saying. Quitting all her jobs was stupid. I don't think she had a choice but to quit. If Portia would have gone back after, you know, doing what she did with Fallon's ex-husband, they would have torn her a new one the next season she had to try to legitimize this marriage by getting off the screen and doing other work she's not that dumb though she kept her house she said she gave it to her mom but she still has her own million dollar home uh it's not a seven million dollar house but it's still a big beautiful home so you know i good luck mims it is sad but it wasn't real I feel like Portia is the kind of girl that's in love with being in love. She got with she got with Dennis, had a baby with him really quick because she wanted everything. She wanted the house, the man, the baby, the money. I think that Portia is a person who's in love with being in love, but she's quick tempered. And I don't know if she actually vets the people. I think she vets their money or at least, you know, their presumable money. Just my opinion, though. Just my opinion. Um, this is what happens when you don't truly know your spouse and you marry for money. That's a fair statement. Simon probably love bombed her. You know, I don't know what Florida Evans did. We know that, um, there were all these trips. We know that the money was flowing. She got to see villas. It was private planes everywhere. It was everything that Portia wanted for her happy ending. We thought. And this isn't even me being shady to Portia. Portia is, I wouldn't call her, a, oh, maybe she was a city girl at some point. But I don't think there's anything wrong with knowing what you want. Everybody has a type. Some people want somebody who is extremely physically attractive. That wasn't Simon. Simon was the one with the money. Some people want to make sure, whether you're male or female, that you are cared for. There's absolutely nothing wrong with going after what you want. And I think that a lot of times people get flack. You know, they're like, oh, you know, she's so beautiful. She needs to be with um, a football player. Well, she dated them. That didn't work out. She's so beautiful. How did she end up with him? And whenever people say that, I'm like, I really low-key be thinking, turn and look at your mate. And think, could they be on the cover of Sports Illustrated or... Um, or men's week. <laughs> I think sometimes we we go in because we feel as though the person should be with a certain type of person. And for Portia, Florida Evans might have been the look. <laughs> uh, Booty Butter <laughs> says, Portia said, one in the pink, two in the stink. I'm done with Booty Butter. <laughs> uh, Brian Patterson says, Mims, you're making Team Portia proud this morning. How? Let me know. I I don't think that I'm Team Portia. Y'all know I like Kenya, but I I Portia has grown on me. Portia definitely has grown on me, but I'm I do think that you know it's more shallow for the money, and that's okay too. That's what she did. Uh, she'll find somebody else. The one thing I can say about Portia is she has even gotten better looking with time. And she goes to this guy that I want to start going to um, for like my facials called the Poor Star. He has Kenya skin looking absolutely amazing. Portia goes there. A lot of the reality stars go there. The only problem is they don't really have one in my city. But when I visit um, ATL next time, I might I might go. Not the booty tooch. Don't sue me, Cordell. But we saw the video. <laughs> Um, okay, so y'all, this is interesting. We got some homework this time around. We definitely have some homework. 
y'all were in my comments heavy about Corey Holcomb and um, Shannon Sharp. In my comments heavy about them because I did a video where I felt like Shannon Sharp was talking to Mike Epps, but he was also speaking to Corey Holcomb. And y'all were like, no, he was only talking to Mike Epps. He was only talking to Mike Epps. However, I showed you guys why I felt he was talking to Mike Epps, but it's live. And I forgot to actually show you the apology. So once you guys see this, you will, it's the last part to connect the dots. Yes. Shannon Sharp was talking about Mike Epps, but he was also talking to Corey Holcomb and Corey Holcomb got the message loud and clear and apologized. So that was the part that I didn't show you because I was like, I didn't understand why I thought that I had pieced it. But then when I went back and watched the video, I forgot to show you guys this clip. So this is the missing piece to that clip. And the motherfucker like, like talking crazy like that. Like if the man say he ain't gay, okay, he not gay then. Fuck, fuck, fuck it. We don't care. We love him anyway. Shannon Sharp is necessary. Good. See, so yeah, everybody's backing it up saying that he did say he's not. That's what I could have swore I saw too. Okay. Boy, mm -hmm. look like what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> they said you look like you stole Shannon's uh gloss or the chest. I got my lip gloss out. <laughs> hey, y'all, don't worry about what I got on. See <laughs> Nah, but yo, I'm just saying, man, I don't want nobody to get beat up. Um, Shannon Sharp, I know what happens when you big and strong over everybody like that. You gotta try to be cool when you don't wanna be cool. You wanna slap the shit out of somebody. Mm. Only problem is when you slap the shit out of somebody, they neck break. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And not even trying. He just seems right. like, kind of, how big is he anyway? Shannon's a big dude. But how big? Um, I, don't know. I bet he about 6'3". Really? So you're hearing this, right? He don't want you fighting nobody. Now that threat was for Mike Epps, but that boomerang hit Corey Holcomb. And Corey Holcomb said, I don't want the smoke. So let me bag off what I've been saying about him. I told you guys it was for Mike Epps, but it was also for Corey Holcomb. And Corey Holcomb picked it up and ran with it and gave a full apology. Might be talking. He's no joke. I'm talking about as far as it go as a human mm -hmm. specimen. He used to do that shit where he was all chiseled in the middle. I'm chiseled a little bit too in the middle, but I could do better. Look, the point I'm trying to make, Shannon, if I ever said something that went too far, I apologize, bro. I apologize. I don't want you to be all upset like that. I'm a silly motherfucker. And, you know. Are y'all hearing it? He actually got an apology. Um, We only got 400 likes, but we got over 2,000 in the chat. Definitely hit the like button. Um. Hopefully we get to at least a thousand likes. So it's a free way to support the channel. Y'all know I don't really ask anything of you, but for that, I appreciate the likes because it does help with the growth of the channel. But let's continue. This was an actual apology from Corey Holcomb. Look, the point I'm trying to make, Shannon, if I ever said something that went too far, I apologize, bro. I apologize. I don't want you to be all upset like that. I'm a silly motherfucker and, you know, I, I, I want to talk about that it's frozen. next. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about how us comedians, we are all so damaged, but it's nothing to be ashamed of. We I... can get better as people, mm -hmm. but you're dealing with the people who've been in the underground, rejected and all like that. You, you're dealing with people with mental damage, man. Comedians have mental damage, but I'm just glad I'm not one of them guys that don't see who I am. Steve Harvey, brother, Steve Harvey went on he went live. Stop they moving. showed the clip for him this week. And Steve Harvey was talking about beefs. And I'm like, bro, you done did too much dirt to be the spokesman for beef. And after that cat stuff, this stop. Like talking about that, what that... comedy's supposed to be. I knew I was, I was like, how, I was like, I see it. You know, I'll be telling y'all, keep me honest. And y'all were like, nope, nope, nope. It's about Mike. It's about Mike Epps. And I was like, I know it's about Mike Epps, but I know it's also about Corey Holcomb. And Corey Holcomb don't want that smoke. When you get big ass Shannon Sharp over here letting you know, I'm going to see you when I get to your city. Shannon going to see you when he gets to your city. And that's not really what you want. Not only that, but Club Shay Shay is, if you are in this space, as in podcasting, YouTube, and you are basically going after Shannon for no reason, you think that Shannon's fan base is not going to come after you? You think that that won't affect your bottom line? 
backtracking. I was like, I know I'm, I mean, sometimes I'm crazy, but I was like, I knew I wasn't crazy. That was literally me not able to show the clip during the live. I really just missed that part. It's a whole lot of moving parts. It's just me. I don't have a production. So, uh, yeah. For all y'all who reached out, Christy, turn your volume on, girl. <laughs> Who's Christy? Who's Chrissy? Anyway, uh, we got some real stuff to get into. First off, y'all wanted to y'all wanted to see how Aston is doing. Aston is horrible. He might look innocent and cute, but he's vicious. He got an F on his report card. An F. Because he bit at the the um the person grooming him. He has gone through three groomers. He's a menace to society. That's how he's doing. Now he's not adorable. He's a menace. Uh, <laughs> he's a menace to society. <clears throat> Let's get into this. Okay. Let's get into this, y'all. We had a conversation last night about Wendy Williams. So if you didn't see it, I'm just going to fill you in. Um, I was in my feelings. I was definitely in my feelings about Wendy. And I had a lot of people reach out to me, um, do DM, and a lot of people reached out to me through the actual video. And I tried my best to respond to each one, as long as it was, you know, as long as they were um, not, like, rude. I want to formally say I was too hard on Black China last night. I was in my feelings about this Wendy Williams documentary. And I had to go back and, and really address personally why I was in my feelings. And it goes back to my own grandmother having dementia, you know, and having had passed away last year. And I just really felt like Wendy Williams was being exploited again. I felt Wendy Williams was being exploited by her business manager um, Wendy Williams' manager denies her son's claim that her team is taking advantage of her. She says she would be questioning why her son's first move was to talk to the press if he really thought that she was dying. Sorry. Um, when we got to see the clip of Wendy with Black China, I really looked at it from a business vantage point, and I said, "Well, Black China, you know, she's probably collecting a fee for this, and you know, you're Wendy's friend." Why would you do this? And I'm, I pride myself on using both sides of my brain. I really do. But I did not give Black China the benefit of the doubt. So let me pull up the clip real quick. And then I'll give you the other side of the spectrum. Um, let's see. And I keep calling her Black China. That's not on purpose. Um, Angela is what I should be calling her. Angela White. Let me pull up the clip. Oh, okay. That's why it's not working. Let's see. Why is this not like working for me? Let's see. Um, okay. Here we, Here we go. Let's share this tab instead. The boss is walking, everybody. Nobody can do it like Wendy. No one. People love Wendy. You are a star to all of us. She was in her living room every single day for 12 years. Yeah, I guess that'll do. And that's what people responded to, her authenticity. And then at the peak of her career, she was gone. This was hard because I'm a Wendy fan. Are we ready? Yeah, we're waiting on you. All right. And away we go. Love you, Wendy. All I know 
is how to be famous. I really want to be back on television. You're going to be back on TV. That's yep. easy. My mom has done a great job making it seem like everything is OK always. When they make sure you look here? One, two, three. But in reality, there's something wrong going on. Did you see a neurologist to find out if I'm crazy? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. No, I can't do this. I can't do this. I have to sit down again. To be put in front of a judge and given a guardian, that was when they took her away from us. I have no money. And I'm going to tell you something. If it happens to me, it could happen to you. As her family, we were all sitting on the sidelines watching. And she was crying out for help. Did you drink this whole thing today? Keep it there. OK. Keep it there. This was the part that really bothered me in the documentary. I mean, we'll get to the Angela White part, but this part really like took me out. It's the cognitive decline alongside, you know, alcoholism. This was hard to watch. But this is what a documentary is. A documentary is I had to like really take a step back. Sometimes I have to take myself out of the story that I'm running to be as impartial as possible. Even somebody was like last night, you've been defending Larry Reed. And I'm like, I've been reporting both sides of the story. I pride myself on that. This time I was angry. I was mad to see a camera in front of this woman's face while she has dementia. I was upset, but okay. <clears throat> My mom, she always talks about how she wants to work, but I feel as though she's worked enough. She has people around who are yes people and allowing this to continue. This is all too much. Go! Fly! I have no idea where we are. This doesn't look like anything familiar. I think she's losing memory. Have you guys noticed that? How dare he? At this point in this stage of her life, it should be about quality of life. And I don't think that being in front of the camera gives her what she needs in terms of a quality of life. With that being said, you see this weird looking woman, that's her conservator. So it got me to thinking, and we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna double back to the Angela White stuff. I'm gonna show you that clip again of Angela. We're gonna double back to that. It got me to thinking what put her what put somebody in the space of needing a conservator? And then I remembered they had all these videos of Wendy Williams, you know, blowing money with this guy, Mark Tomlin, um, in LA and New York. And it turns out that he was a scammer. And it was like, okay, so Wendy's on a cognitive decline. But what gives, and even if she, you know, was being flippant with her money, she's a millionaire. What gives the judge the right to appoint a conservator without actually going first to her family, which in my eyes would be her son, and seeing if he is capable of actually being her conservator, and if not her son, then her sister, who's an attorney. It got me to like really thinking, do people get conservators when they're in a space like the people who are older, who are giving up their nest eggs to Jin Shaw and being scammed? Because we do know that the elderly are really susceptible to um, being scammed. But Wendy wasn't or is not an elderly person. She's 59 years old and I think she was like 57. So now you have a situation where there's something neurological going on. You have you are on the pathway to getting diagnosed with dementia. It is a really deep, heavy subject mixed with emotions. But I was blinded, I guess you could say, by my dislike for this documentary as a whole. But when you flip the coin, if this is what Wendy decided to do in order to show the world what her conservatorship was like, who am I? It's just hard. It's definitely, it's such a nuanced topic because so many of us deal with Alzheimer's in our family. If it's not in your family, you know somebody who's had it. Dementia. Um, we have people who are having to care give. It's some shit, y'all. 
Do I think that Wendy was on the decline while she was on the show? Absolutely. I feel like the mistake that she made was not actually um, the white producer's fault, but he got blamed for it. Then we started seeing later on that um, she would forget things. It, it, it's like we are looking at this person deteriorate right in front of us. And I'm not a journalist. I am a, a person who considers myself pretty empathetic, but I did not give I did not give Angela empathy. I had to go back and watch that video. So I, I definitely want to retract my statements. Let me find the video of Angela and Wendy so that you can see what we were talking about. Um, while we're looking for it, yes, I'm fully aware that Wendy did start making friends outside of the workplace. Wendy, I've been watching Wendy since the Wendy Williams experience, has always said she never necessarily wanted to be a celebrity. She talks to her people, which would be the radio listeners and then eventually the people who watched her talk show. She didn't, she went home at night. She was not in the circles partying. She was going home, being a wife and a mom, cooking dinner and thing and those type of things. So when I was watching the Wendy Williams show, and then I start saw her start easing into, okay, I'm friends with Marlo and I'm friends with Nene and I'm friends with Angela. I kind of all I grouped them all together. But I really did not give any credence to the fact that Angela battled substance abuse issues, and so did Wendy. And that might have connected her in a different way to Wendy. I had to really go back and think about this stuff, y'all. Just like when I believe Wendy, when she started crying over Whitney Houston, because I think that she felt like that could have been her. I think she felt like that could have been her in that situation. And I think that she probably does have a soft spot. Now, the Ninis of the world, where it's just about shopping and stuff like that, and Nini getting her to, you know, do something on the Housewives of Atlanta and her calling Nini that girl over there. I still feel that way. I'm I don't feel like that was necessarily like her best friend who would travel and sit in the front of the audience and she would be so happy to have her. Um, there's allegations about her friend, was it like Melina, Medina, as in she was also part of the issues with the drugs and alcohol. I don't know about all that. What I do know is I definitely was in my feelings watching this. I said I was not going to watch the documentary, but I think that I will watch the documentary. Even though it's going to be hard because this is what Wendy wanted. Wendy was the one who initially signed the contract. So I can, let me, I think we have it pulled up. Let's see. This was the scene that like took me out. Like this was like watching it in the morning was hard. Rewatching it was just as hard. I like recently been changing my life. Since we last spoke, you've always been like honest with me and like put me in my place. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like the most motherly kind way that's why i love you so much because even when i was going through my darkest times like you never used that against me you know what i mean and that's how you know that the love is like genuine and it's yeah. always gonna be there you know and i'm always being for you like i was mad that she didn't have her wig on i was upset straight up you could call my that woman does not do anything without her wig i phone whenever i'm so serious and i think i'm gonna be back and forth from new york so i'm gonna be coming to see you more. Well, my real name is Wendy Hunter. Hunter. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um. Did Angela handle this scene right? I looked at this from the vantage point of Angela probably got some type of fee to be there. Then when I thought about it again, maybe she didn't get a fee. Maybe this was an instance where Wendy called in a favor. Angela flew out to film this scene. The one thing that you can't really do with people who are suffering from Alzheimer or dementia or who are in that moment where they don't forget, you don't want to you don't want to push back. You definitely do not want to push back because that will agitate them, that will frustrate them and it, it just doesn't help the situation. 
So I still don't feel like this scene should have been shot. I'm, I'm, I don't feel like the scene should have been shot, but I am retracting my statements on Angela because yes, Angela did handle this moment right. She did. She didn't push back. She allowed Wendy to say what Wendy had to say. And I'm forced. Yes. He's got no money. Yeah. I like, yeah. 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 I love you. So do I. At this point, it's not about fixing her. It's about quality of life for the remaining life that she does have. She should be around familiar faces. Um, one thing that really kind of like took me out because I wanted um, my family in Louisiana to come over to my house or, you know, and it got to a point where my grandmother wasn't comfortable being anywhere other than the house because the house was the only thing that she remembered. So we could want her here to, you know, spend time with her and celebrate her, but that's just not the way that it works. They need to be comfortable. They need to be around people that they know. Um, yeah, it got to the point where my grandmother was only actually really, really comfortable with my middle aunt, was, which was her caregiver. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, hold on. We got some super chats. My bad. I didn't see them. <clears throat> um, Shay W says, looks like she finally found that marriage deal breaker. What that the money ain't real. <laughs> Thanks for being a member for eight months. Um, the official Thais report. Y'all might remember Thais report for giving his play by play on TD Jake's pink thong and, uh, canned peach cobbler <laughs> thank you for becoming a member um queen robbie says i love wendy and watching the crips brought me to tears i mean i i'm not gonna lie i was probably a little bit close to that myself queen rob thanks for being a member for a month um jill says i lost my mother last year to alzheimer anyone who has loved the one with dementia or alzheimer's will recognize that glassy twilight twilight look twilight zone look yeah I mean, I, I knew that my grandmother didn't know who I was, but she still like would smile. And then she would always turn, you know, to a person that she did recognize to kind of get some type of like reassurance. Uh, this was not a lucid moment. If you love the person, you would respect their pride and their sense of self before the condition. True. Thank you for the super chat, Jill. Um, Monique says, you're a stand-up guy, ma'am. Your straight shooter should check out Netflix movie, I Care. That conservatorship is suspicious. She being, she being hidden from her family. I would be inclined, you'd be surprised, just anybody in the world, how many degrees of separation you have from somebody. I'm going to see how many degrees of separation I have. And maybe if money is funny, maybe you know, I could do like a GoFundMe or something where all the proceeds going to maybe Wendy's sister, who's the attorney or Wendy's son. If, if money is part of the reason why they're not able to fight the conservatorship. So I'm going to look into that to see if I have any, any possible connection or if, I mean, the son owns a business, so maybe I could reach out that way. I don't know. Um, but I would definitely be willing to do that. Uh, cause I do feel like she should be with her son right now. They're saying that Wendy is in some type of treatment facility. And initially they said it was for her, you know, dementia, but now they're saying it's related to substance abuse. So it's a lot of stories going out around and you just never know who you might know that might know somebody. Um, Thanks for the super chat, Monique. And Jill says this this was triggering and not a good look for the people around her. It makes me think she's being used and neglected. I'm kind of with you. 
Um, just Patches said, Mims healing comes in different forms and different takes time. Thank you for your transparency and for allowing others who have dealt with or are going through similar challenges to see why they are not alone. Now, if you don't know who Just Patches is, Just Patches is actually a counselor. He was on my open panel the other night and he sounds like Barry, um, what is his name? Barry White. So um, next time I do open panel, a lot of you guys liked what Just Patches had to say. I'll definitely drop Just Patches information because um, he is a counselor. Y'all, this is some, this is a day. It's actually been a hell of a week. Uh, where are we at on likes? I'd be forgetting to look. I forget a lot. I and I just be doing stuff for free all the time. Um, I talk to an attorney and I'm not supposed to be doing that, apparently. Um, okay. So we do have a thousand likes, but we got like 31 people, 3,100 people. Definitely hit that like button. Shout out to my sister Charisma. Let's do some good news. My sister Charisma and Freddie, her boyfriend, are now Charisma and Freddie, the newly engaged <laughs> couple. So shout out to them. Um, I got to see the the um I wasn't there for it, but I got to see the video and they look very happy and I'm very happy for them. And wherever they get married, I think it'll be a destination marriage. I will be there. Uh, there was one more thing that we needed to discuss real quick, but I don't remember. That's how I didn't get the Corey Holcomb story all out because I'd be forgetting. Um. Oh, we'll we'll come. I don't think I'm gonna go live again today, but um, whatever it is, I will remember it by tomorrow. This this sorry guys, this windy thing is is definitely very triggering for me, and just rewatching it has kind of like put me in not the best uh, not the best headspace. Um, Carol Chamberlain says, "I applaud your compassion, your ability to see things in a different way. I hope Wendy's family can get her back in their care. I hope so too." I'm really going to work on seeing if I can get to either the sister or the son and see if if they need like money for an attorney to help get her out of the conservatorship. Uh, C says, when Wendy caught all the flack on her show, something told me she had early dementia. People didn't understand my mom's prob problematic behavior either. <sighs> From what I've seen, it's it's really frustrating. It's like having a thought in your head and then losing it but that happening constantly happening constantly um a lot of people are saying they can't watch show and tell is not necessary yeah it you know i feel like i'm probably gonna be triggered all weekend through watching this thing the family needs a good lawyer asap well yeah we can see what we can do um, and I think that outside of just us, a GoFundMe for Wendy Williams would probably be, would probably make a lot of money for an attorney. And I'm surprised that an attorney hasn't offered to go pro bono. Um, yeah. Either way, guys, thank you guys for being here. Uh, I will see you guys later. Unless something else really, really crazy pops off, I'm not coming back today. This was a lot. <laughs> Between all that and the Larry Reed, Tasha K stuff from last night, this is all a lot. So, what would you say? That woman is Wendy's handler. You can tell by the eyes. She does look kind of crazy. Um, if you're triggered, why watch? Because maybe they just put the most triggering things in the initial like trailer. Maybe the rest of it, we get to see glimpses of Wendy. That's why. But um, if it gets too deep, yeah, I will definitely turn it off. But maybe we'll do open panel on it, y'all. Maybe we'll do open panel on um, Wendy Williams this weekend after we watch the documentary. Or for those of you who want to watch the documentary, um, I got to go. Bye, y'all. Have a good day.